Hey what's up guys, NQ here and today we'll be going over a list of new features, abilities and much more for Destiny 2. In this video I hope to present all of the facts surrounding the upcoming release and differentiate it from the original Destiny. Starting from the top, Destiny 2 will have a compelling and immersive story with a fresh beginning awaiting all new returning, casual and competitive players. It'll deliver an experience for all to discover. It also will have a cinematic story with very relatable characters characters. The narrative goes as follows. Humanity has fallen to an overwhelming invasion force led by Lord Gaul, the imposing commander of the brutal Red Legion. He has stripped guardians of their power and forces survivors to flee their home. Players will venture out into the solar system to discover an arsenal of weapons and devastating new combat abilities. To defeat the Red Legion and confront Gaul, they must reunite humanity's scattered heroes, stand together and fight back to reclaim our home. That sounds pretty damn epic, there's also going to be 4 new destinations in Destiny 2. There was a leak way back when that mentioned that there was supposed to be 4 new planets or destinations and that each one of the planets was supposed to be double the size of one of our planets that we currently have in Destiny 1. Again, take that with a grain of salt that is not confirmed, um, but it does seem very realistic in my opinion. Starting things off, we have of course the European Dead Zone which is located on Earth. This is the largest destination yet, featuring a lush forest, abandoned town, a cave system below the surface, and a Red Legion military base to explore and contest. Titan is the second destination. This is one of Saturn's moons where Commander Zavala is regrouping at the hands of Gaul. There is no land on Titan. Instead, players explore a series of Golden Age platforms surrounded by a rolling ocean. The third destination is Nessus. It is a strange and unstable planetoid that has been fully consumed by the Vex, where players will find Cade Six is caught up in his own adventures in a stunning landscape of sheer walls, lush canyons, and creepy Vex caverns. The final destination is Io or Eo. I'm not too sure how to pronounce it, but it is a moon of Jupiter where a coral ray has gone in search of answers. Io is the last known site the traveler visited during the Golden Age, and it's now occupied by our enemies. The all new director is something that I'm personally extremely excited for just based on the limited footage that we've seen during the Destiny 2 reveal stream. The director is your guide throughout Destiny 2 in your search for adventures, lost sectors, new public events, and much more. Players can pick a landing zone, explore, and seamlessly jump into other activities in game. This is absolutely fantastic news, I have been asking for this feature since day one and the entire community frankly has been wanting this ever since Destiny came out. Over the years, I can't even stress how much time I've wasted it just going back to orbit and picking a new destination and then flying to that destination. Now we'll be able to simply choose a new destination while we're in game, there's no need to return to the orbit screen at all if you want to go to another destination and I think that is absolutely fantastic. It'll feel like we're connected to the entire universe within Destiny, which is a feeling that a lot of us wanted and probably expected going into Destiny when it first launched. Now I briefly mentioned these three new features, but I never really talked about what they were. Adventures, lost sectors, and public events are things you're going to encounter while you are just strolling, minding your own business, and exploring within Destiny 2's universe. Adventures are shorter missions with self-contained stories for players to learn more about the Destiny 2 universe and the characters that live there. I know a certain person who's very much going to uh, appreciate this feature right here. His name is Bife, you guys know who he is, uh, but this is basically uh, to please all of those people out there in the Destiny universe that love uh, reading the Grimoire cards and absolutely love Destiny's storyline. There's a lot of story there, believe it or not, but it's just hidden in the Grimoire cards. So hopefully, with this new feature called Adventures, we'll be able to go off on these side adventures and just basically learn a lot about about the lore, the very rich lore behind Destiny's universe. 
The second feature is Lost Sectors, scattered enemy dungeon layers throughout the world you can discover with unique boss enemies guarding treasure to earn. This is something that has me extremely excited. You could be just strolling around on one of the planets and you can randomly enter a dungeon or a cave and there might be an absolutely badass boss in there. You gotta kill him, he'll drop a key and that key will then open up a chest which will give you most likely a very unique boss related reward. That has me extremely excited. And the last one is something you guys are familiar with and this is public events, unique optional dynamic combat activities that players can join on the fly as they roam around the world solo or with up to 9 other players. This is something you guys already know and are familiar with within Destiny um, but my guess is they're going to make this very much more extravagant, there's probably going to be a lot of new features and um, just more mechanics overall. The Crucible has been changed quite a lot and something that a lot of people don't necessarily agree with is that every single one of the game modes and playlists within the Crucible are now going to be 4v4. This is something a lot of people just simply don't like and I think I'm in the same boat with most of those people. I would have loved to see 4v4 game modes for those competitive playlists but I think there definitely needs to be a little bit more of a playlist where people can just relax and have fun and I think like 8v8 would be perfect for that maybe we could have big team battles on larger maps like 12v12 that would be awesome uh, but for some reason Bungie decided to make every single one of the game modes 4v4 now remember that can definitely change before the release of destiny 2 and that most likely will not be the case moving forward after the launch as they may in implement different game modes with um, 5v5 6v6 maybe even more or less than that in an expansion we're just gonna have to wait and see but a new game mode that they released is countdown it's a new competitive mode where players spawn on either offense or defense and when the round ends you swap sides and rolls this is something that people have been wanting in trials of osiris since it came out in destiny 1 and we're finally getting it in this game mode here in destiny 2. the goal is to plant a bomb at the enemy base and then defend it until it explodes each round is worth one point and the first team to get the six wins to revive a teammate you must use a revive token so you will not be able to endlessly spam the revive and just keep getting people up over and over there's going to be a limited amount of times that you can do this per round which i think is a pretty awesome feature power weapon ammo is only granted to the only player who picks it up or i should say the one player who pulls it working as a team is the key to victory so that sounds like a pretty damn competitive game mode like it seems balanced in terms of the mechanics and the objective and i'm definitely looking forward to playing that specific game mode another feature that's been added to Destiny 2 that a lot of people have been wanting to see for a very long time now is a new integrated system that allows friends to bring their community and unique culture to the forefront of Destiny. Clans have been fully integrated into the game and will provide official banners, invitations, and their own rewards and experience systems for all members. This is absolutely fantastic. If you do not play every single day but you do belong to a clan, you're actually going to see the fruits of their labor, which in my opinion is very very, very cool. Another feature is called Guided Games, a new feature that brings solo players and clan communities together to play Destiny 2's most challenging activities including raids, trials, and nightfall strikes. People have been asking for matchmaking with these end game activities for a very long time now and Bungie really didn't want to deliver matchmaking because they thought gaming communities could be quote unquote very toxic at times and I would definitely agree and now this is their solution to matchmaking these end, uh, end game level activities. So if you ever want to run a raid and you're a solo player and you don't have too many friends to play with, you might not have a clan, then you can actually search for clans that are currently looking for a solo player to play with uh, for example a raid and you can actually choose if you want to you know join up on that clan and eventually hopefully Bungie's idea is that you might become friends with that clan and end up joining their clan so very cool idea right there I definitely love that concept 
Okay, now let's start talking a little bit about the supers and the way that the weapon class system now acts in Destiny 2. Traditionally in Destiny 1, we had the primary, secondary, and heavy weapon classes, but now in Destiny 2, they changed that pretty significantly. We have the kinetic, energy, and the power weapon slots. Of course, kinetic is pretty much associated with primary, energy is secondary, and power is heavy. Well, what has changed? Basically, primary weapon slot, you will not find any any elemental damage whatsoever. You're still gonna see your hand cannons, uh, your pulses, your scouts, and your auto rifles, but you will not see any of them with elemental damage. But if you're starting to take a look at your energy slot, which is basically your secondary slot, this is where you're also gonna see the same weapons as your primary slots. So you're gonna see the autos, the pulses, and hand cannons additionally in your secondary slot, but this time they're actually gonna have elemental damages on them. And a funny little fact is that if you're playing crucible and somebody on the other team has a super active you can kill them a lot quicker by using energy based weapons instead of kinetic weapons so that's an early little tip right there for you and of course power weapon slots is where you're going to find things like your grenade launchers which is a brand new weapon type and of course it's something that you guys might not know is that the fusion rifles sniper rifles and shotguns are all now moving into the power weapon slot which is basically like the heavy weapon slot a new type of weapon was also revealed called the chain gun. This is a primary weapon and it almost looks like you're carrying around a turret. It's very strange indeed. Additionally, Bungie revealed some new super abilities, and with these new super abilities came new subclasses. Now, these new subclasses are replacing some of the ones found in Destiny 1, such as the Sunsinger, the Defender, and of course, the Blade Dancer. Unfortunately, those three subclasses will not find their way into Destiny 2, but all the other subclasses that I did not mention will be carried over into Destiny 2, and most of them will be revamped and changed significantly, which is a good thing. There definitely needs to be a little bit of a fresh start and something different about each one of the subclasses when it comes to this new release. But let's stick to the new three subclasses for now. The first one is called the Dawnblade and this is going to be the replacement of the Sunsinger. Basically when you pop the super, your warlock grows these black wings and he can basically float around the map and he has a sword in his hands that he can either slam on the ground while he's in the air and it does like a wave of damage around him or while he's in the air he can actually swing his sword and out of the sword comes these waves of fire that absolutely obliterate anybody in their way which is phenomenal i think a lot of people are going to choose this subclass as their starter but then again now that i think about the other two they are pretty awesome as well the next one is basically captain america this is the sentinel and this is of course the replacement for the defender he has a shield that he can kind of go around and shoulder charge people with and instantly just destruct them or he can actually throw his shield and get multiple kills and then grow another shield on his hand so he has kind of like an area of a effect damage he also has a throwable and at the same time his shield can be used defensively so this is a very cool subclass and it's extremely versatile the last new subclass is the arc strider for the hunter and this is the replacement for the blade dancer this one is in my opinion the most lackluster because it is very very similar to the blade dancer it is an arc staff that your hunter pulls out and instead of just swiping left and right and moving very quickly like a ninja with it he actually does a ton of flips backflips, crawls, all this weird stuff that acrobats do, and uh, it looks very, very smooth and awesome in terms of the animation, but in a sense, it's basically the same super. You're swiping with something that's blue in your hand, and you're killing multiple people right in front of you. Still, a very cool subclass, and honestly, this is probably the one that I'm going to choose right off the bat, because who doesn't want to fly around like an acrobat with a staff just murdering everybody? We've been talking a lot about the features, the changes, and of course all the details in regards to Destiny 2, but I want to shift gears really quick and take a step back to talk about the consoles, PC, the release date, and of course specs. Now the one thing that I'm going to get off my chest right away and I know a lot of you guys are going to be bummed about is that Destiny 2 will be releasing on consoles at 30 FPS. It doesn't matter if you have an Xbox One, a PlayStation 4, or even a PlayStation 4 Pro, you will be stuck and 
and capped at 30 FPS. I was actually shocked that 60 FPS would not be a thing on the PlayStation Pro, but it seems like um, the devs actually went for 4K instead of a higher frame rate. 4K is pretty cool, but unfortunately, having a 4K monitor to take advantage of that resolution is definitely a luxury in 2017. Now that we've gotten that bad news out of the way, let's talk about the PC version of Destiny 2. Because from what other people have been saying who have played Destiny 2 on PC, is that this game is freaking phenomenal and absolutely beautiful. It is uncapped in terms of the frame rate, so you could play up to 200 frame rates if you have a good enough computer, of course. You could play 60, 80, 30, it doesn't matter. You can play any frame rate that you like on PC, which makes the game extremely smooth. And then, of course, the resolution. It goes all the way up to 4k on PC as well and there are a suite of options that you can change here's a picture right now that I'll put up on screen uh, that somebody took during the capture event and it shows all of the features that PC currently has now of course more can be added when the actual release comes out and that actually brings me on to my second point which is a little bit more bad news unfortunately the PC version of destiny 2 will not release on September 8th absolute bombshell I know so first disappointing piece of news we have is that 30 FPS will be capped on consoles and the second piece of disappointing news is that the PC version will not come out until sometime after September 8th a rumor from way back when said that they would come out during Christmas I hope that's not the case because that is very far away and I want to play Destiny 2 on the highest specs on the highest frame rate and in the most beautiful quality possible it'll be coming out through battle.net battle.net is owned by Activision Blizzard for those of you who do not know. One more thing that I forgot to mention really quickly, Bungie did not comment on the frame rate of the Xbox Scorpio. Maybe they're waiting to see if it can handle it, but who knows. My theory is that it will not be 60 FPS because Sony has a deal with Destiny and Activision, and I don't think they'd have their consoles performing at 30 FPS while Xbox would get 60 FPS, but again, that's just my theory and my opinion. I am not too sure. We'll have to see and wait for an official announcement. Okay, I totally lied. That is not the end of the bad news. Since we're getting towards the end of the video, I want to just get this last stuff off my chest here so you guys all know about it. Number one, there will not be dedicated servers in Destiny 2. I know, an absolute heartbreaker. This will make things definitely a little bit laggy. Hopefully they fixed most of their connection issues moving forward from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2, but still, that is an absolute heartbreaker. I am very disappointed that there will not be dedicated servers. Now, the second thing that is also disappointed, you guys are probably just right now just shooting yourselves and just so mad, but okay, the last piece of disappointing news is that it doesn't look like private matches or custom games will be present at the launch of Destiny 2. So it seems like they've stripped that, you know, they added it in Destiny 1, but it seems like they will not be adding that in for the launch of Destiny 2. Now, in my mind, I think that they will be bringing it back in an expansion or in an update sometime after the launch, but for the launch, it seems as though it will not be there. That is going to do it for the video, guys. I know that it absolutely sucks that I left this video on such bad news. Uh, just a lot of bad things 30 fps no dedicated servers no private matches pc being delayed i know kind of shitty but honestly this game is just fantastic from what i've heard from all of the content creators who went out to the reveal and played the game the pc version is absolutely beautiful and i can't wait to get my hands on it everything else in terms of the game looks fantastic and i think they fixed a lot of their mistakes when they launched destiny 1 thank you all very much for watching if you enjoyed or if this video was informative or helped you out in any way shape or form i would definitely appreciate a like on the video subscribe for more daily destiny content have a great day and i'll see you all later peace